Hi guys, welcome down to Improve My Golf and welcome down to a third episode of the Left Handed Series with myself Andy Carter and himself Ant Wilson and in today's video we're going to talk about Ant's swing, his strengths and weaknesses and also his goals and aspirations for this season. I think at the start of every season you need to set some goals, realistic goals. I think we all want to achieve probably a little bit more than we're either capable of or what's realistic realistic for one year so we're going to look at Ant's exact handicap and then try and figure out what a really good realistic goal to get to for the season before we do any of that we're going to do a slight game assessment now this is something that I do with everyone that I teach at the start or kind of the, the first lesson it's really good understand a really good way of getting an understanding of the strengths in terms of driving fairway woods hybrids long irons short irons pitching chipping everything down to equipment and if you've seen episode two you know that there's no issue with equipment <laughs> um, course management putting and even just your kind of your mental approach and time for golf so how much time you have to actually practice so we're going to mark all of those out of 10. now it's important to not kind of get carried away with the numbers too much here because let's say for example we'll base 10 out of 10 on McElroy or Johnson. Now they would probably come back to us and say they're 8 out of 10, they want to get better, but to us, best in the world, they're 10 out of 10. 1 out of 10, he definitely isn't. <laughs> so we've got to try and find, the, we'll kind of figure out what, his, what he feels his number is, and then we're going to try and do a potential in, increase on that number. That's where we start to improve the game, that's when the scores start to be lowered as well. So let's start on the driver. <coughs> My, what? Ne my nemesis. Your nemesis. So we're going straight down to four. No. <laughs> so I think you drive it okay. I. What do you think? I do drive it okay, but I used to drive it well. You know, I used to I used to get get the ball out there, but <clears throat> as we spoke about earlier, you know, I've I've been bogged down with too many swing thoughts and watching too many videos <laughs> on YouTube and. No, but you know, not mine. no, not yours. <laughs> Seriously, though, you know, I think sometimes we, we can get away from what brought us to the game and, and, and overcomplicate the game, and that's what's happened with my driver. I used to just get up there, get set, and just give it a good whack. And you know, I used to get it out there. I, I know we all over egg the, the, the pudding when it comes to driving, but I would say I would I would hit it out there, sort of 260, 270 on a consistent that's, basis. Yes, yeah, that's what you want. But yeah. now I'm probably 30 yards back. Yeah, I was going to say, I think your, the biggest issue with your driver at the moment is the trajectory and then because of the trajectory, the loss of distance as well. You, If you've seen the vlog um, over in episode one, you'll see the irons, you strike well, but in comparison, the driver kind of... Balloons, doesn't it? Yeah, balloons. I, was, I didn't want to use that word, but yeah, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with balloons. It, it does balloon up and then it just gets really, looks really, really spinny in the air, it loses a lot of distance. So. That is a, I think, moving your handicap forward, moving towards your goals, that is something that we really have to try and improve on. So, what would you reckon? I'm going to say four. Four, yeah, okay. I think that's an honest assessment. And if we wanted to try and get it to a number, what would, what, what number would be the... Not going off your analogy before with Rory and Dustin, I think I need to get to a sort of seven. Yeah, seven agreed. Yeah. Seven, seven would be a great... If you, you get your driving up from four to seven, you're in so many more fairways and not even that to be honest you, you don't even need to be on the fairway as long as you've got a second shot you need to kind of make sure that there's a your two or three club Full shorter, shorter yeah. into greens that's where you kind of really that's when the best players really start to make up you score in the night you're yeah, like five sure. irons to par four you're hitting a seven eight seven iron. or eight iron, exactly um your fairway woods so we've got the new callaway epic in there at the moment yeah i mean i'm not getting that yet i only got it yesterday but um as we saw it for me really, I do generally hit my three wood quite well. Um, yeah. <coughs> I can hit it off the tee, second shots into par fives. I hit, I hit it on a flatter trajectory than the, the driver, so at the minute I'd say I'm sort of five and a half. Right, okay, cool. I'll put five, like it. And your hybrid, the old faithful, the tight list that's stayed, that's kind of <laughs> held its ground. Yeah, and, and again, it's very similar to my fairway woods. and. I would say five and a half, maybe even six with the hybrid. I feel right. very confident hitting it off the tee ground. Good, no, six is good, we'll go with that. Um, okay, going into the longer irons then. Um, long irons... What have we got in the bag? Is it four I'm, and five? I'm four or five, yeah. Uh, I, I'm comfortable hitting either of them on the um, 
four iron, I'd probably get out there 190 to 195. Right, brilliant. Five, probably 10 yards less. Um, well, going to gaps quite nice. Yeah. You generally do, I think, to be fair, you do strike strike the iron as well. The, my irons are certainly less of a concern than the rest of my game at the minute. And at the minute, I would certainly rate them higher than my woods on my hybrid. So I'm going to say six and a half at the minute. Oh, perfect. Mid irons again, you kind of mid and short with the same six I'd go and the same halves. again yeah. for both them, yeah, six and a half. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I have a bit of a rice mile on there. The scoring's up. <laughs> to be fair, when I see pitching, I just I, something shudders inside me. Um, this is the real scoring zone. You get your drive out there, we get the drive up to number seven. The irons are not a concern. This is your third shot into a par five. This is where you really want to start making, sticking a couple of birdies on the. Maybe if there's four par fives, you want to at least get one on yeah. the par fives. Absolutely. And this is where your third shot really comes in. I mean, I, I would Unless say... that driver is going like 9 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can knock <laughs> on the green like Rory, yeah. <laughs> um, for, for me, pitching and chipping are very much one and the same in, in terms of my game. Yeah. I, I would say that even being honest, um, it's got to be the same as my driver, 4. Right, OK. Um, and they need to be getting 7, yeah. really, because that's where we're going to score. Yeah. I think you get 7s all the way through that board, you're probably in cat 1. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely that's, the, that, yeah. that's the that's probably where you're going to be getting to uh, so chipping as well similar for four, four yeah. bunkers bunkers uh, we've never done a session of the bunker I actually didn't see you in a bunker at four so I've got no idea if you're do you know what uh, bunkers hold no fear for me I'm, uh, I'm fairly comfortable hitting out of bunkers sort of splash shots onto the green getting them open stopping I would say I'm at five at the minute cool good man good that. it's one less thing to do <laughs> <laughs> putting Putting, I enjoy putting. It's when I'm, when I'm in a position where I, you know, I can convert. I, I feel confident over the ball. We, we spoke at Formby about having the toe slightly yeah, up. Yeah, just just something I've been working on in, in the last sort of week or so. Um, at the moment, I'd say I'm six. Six. Yeah. Perfect. Six. Okay, this is this is always a, a tricky one. Course management. Yes. Now. It's probably hard for either of us to figure out your course manager because you'll assume that you're always making the right <laughs> decisions. As we do. Yeah. Maybe until afterwards. Yeah. And I'll assume you're always making the wrong decisions. <laughs> yeah. But where would you kind of where would you kind of put yourself on that? Um, again, trying to be as honest as I can. Uh, I would say sort of five. About five. Five at the minute. We had a couple of instances over at Formby Hall in the in the previous vlog where it's only really in and around the greens. I just kind of, I'm just there to kind of almost play devil's advocate. You hit a shot, and I'll say, well, why didn't you try this? And if you try it a couple of times and you really don't like the shot, you don't like the shot. It's not really yeah. a big, it's not a big deal. You just kind of, you've got to work more on the shots that you're comfortable with as well. So there's that. There's always that side of it in and around the greens that you can, you've got thousands, or hundreds of options around the green yeah. where you can really just hit any sort of shot with any sort of club really go find your comfort levels yeah tee shots and how the hole set up some golfers like to try and hit draws and fades off tees that's probably where i think course management drops down because that's when you start really over stretching yourself and yeah. trying to hit too many different shapes of shots kind of too often over complicating yeah, yeah exactly yeah massive play, play to your strengths yeah. and yeah. play what's in front of you um equipment yeah. i think we're safe to say we're on 10. Yeah, without a contract, I mean, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing yeah, right. You're doing pretty good there. Yeah, I've got no excuses. <laughs> Your mental approach. Um, so, what I mean by that is, does the head go down? Do you get overconfident? Um, do you start to think ahead if you've got a good score going? No, I, genuinely, I, in my early days, in my early golf career, if you want to put it like that, I, I was very... Uh, I had issues with my temper, shall we say. So I, you and I, me both. I, I, yeah, I was your archetype of golfer. I mean, I, I, as we discussed before, I was down at sort of seven point two, and it really preyed on my mind. It was at 14, 15, 16, I was on a good score. Very, very similar to most golfers, I guess, in terms of you watching your card, you're conscious that you've not got many shots left. Uh, I'd hit a bad shot, and, and then the world would end. Um, <laughs> but the, I'm, I'm the club. Yeah, yeah, the, the world would. Yeah, that would go as well as the club. Yeah, um, but. These days, Andy, I think, <coughs> probably because I'm a little bit older now, yeah. may, maybe a little bit more mature, um, I, I'm a little bit more, I have things more in perspective. If I hit a bad shot, I'm quite comfortable to put it to the back of my mind, um, 
what I do struggle with is if I'm faced with a, a tough shot that I don't enjoy, a right. flop shot over a yeah. bunker, I'll fret about it. Yeah. And then I, if I don't execute, which most times I don't because it, it's in my head already, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll then carry it on to the next shot and I'll be, oh, I should not have done that. Yeah. So again, you so know, disappointment was kind of the one you carry the disappointment. Yeah. I'm not angry, I'm disappointed. Yeah, pretty yeah. much like, like my mum and dad at me when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How they felt when you were throwing clubs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess. Yeah, I think shots situation. I think we all get into that situation. If you're you've got a chip over something, or even just. <coughs> chipping in general to be honest uh, <laughs> you start kind of worrying about the negative yes. start thinking about what's going to go wrong rather than maybe being a bit more excited about what could what could go right yeah. I think you get a bit more excited about the good stuff even when it goes wrong it's general, generally not as bad yeah. as thinking so badly about the shot in the first place so that's something that I think that just comes with confidence in yourself confidence in your technique confidence from practicing and playing the shot you get confident with the shot you don't fret about it as much doesn't have so much of an impact so that's something we we can control with practice yeah. but that'll really come down to kind of <clears throat> how often you execute the shot that you weren't expecting to execute so well so that's when you'll really get there so five that's fair, five yeah. or six yeah. yeah and time for golf not enough not enough. <laughs> Always not enough. Due, due to my job, I uh, work in the motor trade, um, which is world renowned for not having enough time for anything <laughs> really. Um, it's not enough. Um, but I have made a, a, you know, a conscious decision yeah. uh, with you that I'm going to really concentrate this year on getting my handicap down and putting the time and effort in that you need to um, and not making the same mistakes over and over and over again because I think the problem we have as, as recreational golfers is we'll have a lesson we'll come back to the range and then we'll get back into our comfort zone yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and I'm going to take myself out of that comfort zone now and keep working on things that yeah. I don't like doing yeah. and get better so at the minute it's four four yeah you I mean if you could get better. I mean you've got, it's got a swing it's got a swing <coughs> in the house it's not quite a swing room. You, you're painting a bit of a you got you got, you got you got to paint the picture it's got a simulator it's yeah. a couch and a fridge at the back with a few <laughs> bits in it well, quite as that you know it's a conservatory with, with a big netting and uh, you know a mat and a, and a sky trap but, um, that's awesome it is awesome but my wife's not very happy about <laughs> right so handicap exact at the moment is 11.8 so over here in the UK is where we don't have slope average What's the what's the goal? Short uh, what we're we gonna say, short term goal will pretty much get us to the end of the season. Short term goal I think Andy, we, we need to be single figures, so single figures sub, sub ten. Um, but not just sort of focusing on how many cap, it's more about consistency, isn't it? Yeah, that's when we also start looking at the game, the numbers on the game assessment. So sub ten um, below so sorry, single figures handicap wise, but in terms of the game assessment we want driver maybe up to six, yeah. pitching and chipping, certainly we can get to so seven we, we on the areas, areas, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. These were the kind of the areas highlighted in red are the are the bits where we've got to try to try to improve on first and foremost. I think even even those three well no, those three aspects are massive. So those three aspects improve your shooting seven eight over nine nine over every single round of golf. So that's exactly what we're gonna kind of get straight into. Long, medium term, twelve. Well, twelve months obviously will take us through the next winter. So, long term, couple of years time. Is that when you kind of? Yeah, uh, it's got to be category one goal. Yeah. that's where I want to be. Um, you know, I'm competitive by nature, and, and that's what I want to achieve. So, the category one is five or below. Yeah, four point four. Right, awesome. So, we've got an idea on Ant's game, his strengths and his strengths and weaknesses from his perspective. If you guys hope you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to the channel. Follow us on our social media platforms as well, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And we'll see you again next week.